Unit 1, Part 2, The Value of Sustainable Food Production. This whole course and this whole uh, curriculum is about sustainable agriculture and sustainable food production. So why bother? What's the value of that? Well, this section of the presentation will concentrate on the value of sustainable food production. And we'll look at definitions of sustainability and how food production can be made more sustainable. So what is it? What is sustainability? Well, according to the EPA, everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends either directly or indirectly on our natural environment. Sustainability creates and maintains the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony that permit fulfilling of social, economic, and other requirements of present and future generations. Hmm. So essentially, sustainability means using resources that can be replenished in a way that promotes the health of the environment while meeting the needs of people. So sustainable agriculture, therefore, means producing food in a way that doesn't deplete the resources of the environment and that doesn't damage the environment so that food can continue to be produced by future generations. Sustainable agriculture doesn't necessarily mean small-scale production. It doesn't mean lower yields. It simply means taking better care of the environment and consequently ourselves so that we can continue to do this throughout the future. Um, the reason that sustainable agriculture is different from the way we typically do it now will be looked at in the next slide here. And we'll touch on this again um, at different points through the course. So why isn't what we're doing now sustainable? Well, most fertilizers are made from petroleum-based chemicals. Regardless of how you feel about uh, greenhouse gases and global warming and whatever, Petroleum is in finite supply, and it's going to run out. So we need some other way to uh, fertilize crops. We need to come up with methods that don't depend on something that's going to run out, essentially. Now, the mining and pumping of those chemicals does contribute significantly to the production of air pollution, chemical waste and greenhouse gases, um, none of which are very sustainable either. Um, but even setting that aside, the fact is petroleum is going to run out. Most pesticides that we use on crops have petroleum-based components. They're suspended in some type of petroleum product or oil or um, that sort of thing with all the same drawbacks as fertilizers. And pesticides and other chemicals applied to agricultural products, whether plant crops or animals, can be toxic to human and other wildlife. And we don't know the full long-term effects of many of them. Uh, there are new pesticides being developed on a regular basis uh, that are being used in the field that we aren't exactly sure um, how they're going to affect the environment around us. Um, and even irrigation of crops has deleterious effects, depleting water sources and adding pollution to rivers, streams, and ponds and lakes, as well as the oceans. And we'll look at some specific examples of uh, that sort of thing. So the benefits of sustainable agriculture Sustainable agriculture would produce virtually no waste that would have to be disposed of. We've seen in other courses how um, certain practices in agriculture, such as composting, produce fertilizer and get rid of 
almost all the waste generated in the process of agriculture. Um, expanding those practices and using others really does make it possible to practice agriculture on a large scale, generating virtually no waste, no greenhouse gases, using no petroleum uh, for fertilizers and pesticides. So again, regardless of your feelings about um, global warming or other aspects of uh, what we're talking about here, having no pollution generated and no waste from agriculture would be a huge step forward. Um, it wouldn't rely on petroleum-based products for fertilizers and pesticides and things like that. At this point, for practicing large-scale agriculture, we still are going to need tractors and vehicles and trucks and transportation that do rely on petroleum-based products, um, but not for the basics of agriculture itself. Um, would result in a net reduction of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. It wouldn't put harmful chemicals into the environment. And it would result in the production of healthy, nutritious foods and a safer and cleaner environment that will be able to support humans for generations to come. Now, this course is about urban agriculture and managing food production systems in an urban environment. So how do we tie sustainability in urban agriculture? Well, actually, it's even easier. Because of the generally smaller scale of urban agriculture, we don't typically see, you know, multi-hundred acre, multi-thousand acre um, farms in an urban area. The smaller scale um, tends to make those farms more sustainable. And in the short run, more amenable to sustainable practice than larger corporate farms. So in urban agriculture, it's actually easier in many cases to step into sustainability um, as opposed to doing it on, on uh, some large scale farms. Um, can also create an almost completely closed loop system. And that's much easier uh, to imagine and to put into practice when starting on a small scale. But the ideas and the methods generated by those systems can be scaled up to meet the needs of larger operations and already has in many, many cases. There are, there are many very large um, sustainable farms in the country and around the world using practices um, developed primarily the closed loop system. Um, placing food production in the same area where the food is consumed also means creating a closer relationship with food production and producers for most consumers. Most of us now have no idea where our food comes from. Many of us have never met a farmer. Um, so having that closer relationship uh, sort of makes things more obvious to the consumer in terms of the benefits of sustainable production. And finally, a few more thoughts on sustainability. This unit's about urban agriculture and managing urban agricultural systems. And in the definition of this class, it isn't necessarily about sustainable practices. However, those two things, urban agriculture and sustainable practices, fit together well because of the scale of most urban agricultural operations. And they can serve as a testbed for generating practices that can be applied to larger operations. Therefore, many of the practices and operations we'll discuss in this unit will tie into sustainable practices in some way. And the world of agriculture is so dependent on artificial fertilizers and chemical pesticides 
the change to sustainable methods isn't going to happen overnight. And it, and it can't happen overnight. You couldn't simply say one day, tomorrow we're not using any artificial fertilizers or pesticides and expect to meet the food needs of the world. However, incremental changes can have big overall effects in improving the environment and those can be implemented and those can be devised and tested and practiced in urban agriculture before being moved on to larger scale systems. So there we go. That will conclude Unit 1.